How we doing guys? Welcome back. So, last time we did manage to set up the start of Kiva Gamma. I, I don't want to say it's fully up and running yet, I'll be honest. I still suspect that we've got to have a lot of issues coming up as we level up the colony, as we have with the other ones. Nothing particularly unusual there. We did also do a bit of data through um, the cache that we re uh, retrieved on Kiva Gamma, which was a bit confusing at best. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what was going on there, but it, it, it's something we'll have to uh, presumably figure out as we go through the act. I'm not sure if that's going to be relevant this act or perhaps later on into the story. So, other than that, we do need to still have a word with Heinrich after his, um, well, quite frankly, nearly heretical behaviour at a certain point while clearing Diva Gamma. But we also have a lot of other, like, I want to call it maintenance stuff to do on the ship. So, we're going to go around and just check everybody see if we've got any new conversations sort out um shopping because we haven't actually bought the latest round of stuff we had from all the reputation gains we've gathered for um trading i guess I call it trading it's kind of just picking it up though you're not really giving anything so we'll start with you let mm -hmm. don't think we've got anything new here we can double check by clicking this yep okay so nothing new there fair enough moving on to abelard Lord Captain. Nothing new there, right? Lord. It's fine. The, the less of this we have to deal with, the more we haven't missed. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where it'd be nice to have new conversations, but also it would mean um, I might have been able to get them earlier because I haven't done this in a while. So let's do shopping, as it were. So first things first, because we've got a whole load of new stuff here. I think the only person we're struggling with reputation for at the moment is the cabalists you know the ones that are run by the guy on um footfall so trading all the trophies we picked up i don't think we have any new trophies i'm gonna have to check because it doesn't do a good job of automatically sorting it even though it should uh yeah because they've got stuff like this here so that's one that's jewelry that's jewelry that's xenos like just a load of little stuff thankfully they have started putting like the red borders around it, which makes it far more visible. But it, it is also, you know, not necessarily the easiest thing to detect, because, like, that one there. Why, why didn't it let me trade that? Go away. Okay. So, I'm going to leave that one there, because I'm unsure if that's relevant. It's also uh, Mechanicus creation, so I don't think it's particularly relevant unless we're dealing with the Mechanicus people. That's something we can put... The it's to, it's stuff I wish they would automatically sort into it because I cannot think of a reason it would stay on this right side. Guess we can get rid of that one. It is good they put the borders in though because that does make it easier to pick out at a glance. Ah, eh, you know what? Get rid of it. Not sure what it is, but I assume it's just cargo because we don't know what it will be for. So trade all these in, then we can see what we can pick up because that puts us to level eight, which we've actually hit the profit factor limit because we would be able to get this but we don't have the things for it which would be an upgrade which is a bit annoying so what do we pick up lance more damage wider arc less range but the wider arc is far more valuable than the range i feel particularly with the combats we're doing so that's good then these tubes are worse than ours but we might as well pick them up anyway and then this is exactly the same as our Okay, not entirely sure why that's there. Would love to get that, because I think that's just an upgrade for our um, torpedoes, but we're obviously a couple of profit factors short on that. We do start getting into gold, so we are getting close to maxing them out. We just need the profit factor to back it up, so I might have to start focusing more on profit factor with the colonies than I have been doing, which is a little annoying, but I guess that's understandable at this point in the game. You are supposed to be growing your, essentially your economy as it were. I have been neglecting it a little with my choices, partly because Iconoclast, I think, leans that way automatically. Okay, so we could give these guys... Is there anything particularly I want from these guys? Because this is Fellowship of the Void stuff. Um, so that is giving the prey bonus to someone who isn't a bounty hunter. That's what that is. It would actually be okay on, like, the sister... Because it would let her, say if you had, if I swapped my bounty, well, picked up the talent with Lafana to get the one where she gets a turn when Prey dies. While she wouldn't get in the crit bonus, 
she would be able to let the sister just pick up all these kills, and then the sister would have a whole bunch of crit chance, which wouldn't be a bad idea, so I'm interested in that. What do you guys take? Because the thing I... I'll show you this now. The thing I'm most interested in getting to is this. Because that would be a massive upgrade for the sister. So, that's the priority. But, what do you guys... I have to check what I can trade over to other people without messing things up. So, these guys don't take heretical trophies. They don't take Xenos trophies. So, those can be traded away. Because I think these guys are most interested in Xenos. So, if I did this and then looked for Xenos. I could sort them by type. Which I love the fact you can sort them. But, like, we can give all... Because these guys love their Xenos stuff. That'd be a good way of at least unlocking some of their stuff. Yeah, that puts it up a fair amount. I'll save the heretical stuff because the um, other guys might want that stuff. Can probably get away with pushing it to the next level. So what's that going to be? Like 600? Which is six of you guys. The ranged weaponry can just be traded off. We get tons of that stuff in. It's not going to be hard to make that back. Uh, okay, so apparently on the level zero stuff, we can't afford half of it because of profit factor. Whoopsies. Um, but we are getting close, so might be able to pick that up in a minute. Hmm. I wonder how the Jukari rifles compare to, uh, like, my solid projectile ones, because I might look at picking that talent up for Lathana instead. So that's just a bunch of regular stuff. Nothing particularly amazing picked up there. With you, what do you want? You want the heretical trophies. Could have given you the Xenos ones, but... Why is that one in... Oh, because it's not finished yet, because I took that. Do need to probably have this on by automatic, and then you can uh, hide it later on would probably be a better way of doing it. Just as a note. So that should unlock the next one. Which... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so that's probably a more melee-focused one that's not particularly important right now. Uh, we did that, done that. Moving on to the Mechanicus stuff. So the Mechanicus stuff, we have unlocked quite a bit with the Mechanicus, it seems. So I assume that's a straight upgrade for the axe. We'll we might do inventory sorting later on. We might do it in between episodes. Because I'll be honest, it's going to take a little bit to go on to every single person. Power Axe is interesting, but we don't... Again, this is a thing. I think there is an entire different gameplay experience if you do a build specialised towards melee. Whereas we're mostly focused into range. So I'm wondering how much... Like, maybe on, like, because I, as I've said before, I'm, if I ever do another playthrough of this, which I probably will when this DLC come out, let's be honest, it will probably be focused on, like, a dogmatic melee assassin, just to see the gameplay differences. Slight disconnect there, apologies. So, what can we trade here? Oh, wait, I think we get... Do we have any jewelry and stuff is what I'm mostly looking for? We do all the way down here. Okay. Because so, that's going to be worth more with them. And these guys we want to push up. So that's fine. That pushes us up to 8. We need to get to 11. And then I guess we can just start trading off all this melee weaponry. like Because I don't think we're going to use much of it. Ship components I'll keep for now. See how close we can get with just like melee all, all the scraps. I kind of wish there was a way to select all. I don't think there is, but it would be a very... Like, if you just wanted to get rid of all of, like, these, you could just click them once. On an icon or something, and then you'd be able to do it all in one go. And that would save a lot of time. I guess they want you to at least think about what you're trading, but... It's the same way they make the car go up and don't really require you to know what's in it. But I suspect they will at some point. So that gets us to 10. So we're most of the way there. We're one off. So we need what? 1,400 and something? What's the highest one we have left? Probably the provisions? Miscellaneous. Uh, no, they're all kind of worth the same now, aren't they? Shit, components worth 200 actually. So that's... Most of the way. I think we just need a little bit more, in which case we can trade off one of the fuels. And that gets us all the way to the heavy flamer. So we'll contest that in a minute, but that'll conclude all the shopping done so we can finally get on to what we were supposed to be doing, which is going to talk to Heinrich.
since I assume he's the only one with actual dialogue. Oh, one too many button presses. I should escape to come out of that. So, with that done, we can get this set up on the sister, and then we can test it out in the first uh, unlucky uh, demon to come encroaching on our void ship. Where is it gone? It should be here, right? It's the unstable. I can just sort by new. It'd probably be easier. Uh, that way around. There we go. What's the damage increase, by the way? Um, where's the flamer gone? I just want to compare them to know how much of an upgrade. Because I know it's like a uh, range and stuff. But I don't know about the damage numbers. Off the top of my head. There we are. Okay, yeah, basically double damage and double pen. Yeah, that's going to make a huge difference because now the Flamer is actually a viable... Because previously, if it was against armored enemies, the Flamer did nothing. Or even just enemies with a lot of health. It was only good versus mooks. But anyways, that's all that done. Let's move on from that. We'll sort it all out later, as I've said before. So, Adira, nothing new here. Uh, Jay Doubtful here have something May to say? Exalted one protect you. Have you grown bored without our little talk, Sherin? <laughs> Shay, it seems like you and Trickster Core were close. Shame he lost his head. My gang is quite the void beast, Sherin, with three heads stemming from a single neck. Core's untimely demise will not interfere with our mutual business. I do feel sorry for his twin, though. Tora has been getting into trouble with her brother since they were kids. Getting out of trouble too, but not this time. But why are we talking about the departed Sherin? We must save a few good words for the living. Take Falco, for example. I will impale that ash mag on a stake, Sherin. You will see. I will pick a slim one so he has more time to appreciate it. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, so that's oh. all we had there. So that was from the little uh, dialogue we had where basically pirates tried to... Uh, I want to say kidnap, it was more acquire. It was more like they were just trading off with a fret, but okay. So Pascal, do you have anything you'd say? 19% of my processing power is engaged in the analysis of my tech comrade's memory. My response time may be longer than usual. Have you found anything out? The data is scarce. His identification code is the same as mine, and his memory contains data confirming that the assassination did take place. Unfortunately, some of his memory was damaged by Ponce's broadcast by his battle harness. I can assert with some confidence that he was who he claimed to be, and that he served the Deus Mechanicus earnestly and eagerly. He gave off the impression of a paranoid madman. Notwithstanding his permanent state of agony, he was not cognitively dysfunctional. His desire to immediately destroy the object he had deemed profane was partly dictated by his engrammatic augmentics, which were receiving imperatives from his battle harness. In light of the oddness of our matching identification codes, I find merit in his hypothesis as to the existence of a clandestine malevolent agent or conspiracy operating inside our fraternity. Who do you think was behind the assassination? No data available. I will hypothesize that the assassination was instigated by an enemy of the Blessed Amanat's doctrine. I accept the possibility that the assassins were targeting me only to be led astray by Tarsus and my own identical identifiers. I am concerned about the fate of Archmagus Amanat. According to Opticon 2-2, he went missing in the wake of the incident on an Arc Mechanicus, the Hermetico. Information about that ship and its perishing has been purged from the archives. I accept the possibility that the incident on the ship, the concealed data, and the assassination have all been part of a single conspiracy. Are you not surprised that Aramat's words had <laughs> such an effect on Opticon 22? I was not knowledgeable as to how popular Blessed Aramat's teaching was in exploratory circles. 
The Cognizant's fleet is massive. His ideas might have found a larger following on its periphery than in the Mother Squadron. Arinet was a believer, uh, believer in he caused a schism. Azam was a believer in he, he, and he turned into a zealot. Faith can be dangerous. Of course faith is dangerous. Faith is the prerogative of the spirit, and a spiritless mind is an enemy of all existence. Without faith, there is no meaning in anything, no point to any aspirations or limitations. But faith can take different forms. The form of prohibitions established by unknown elders. The form of an audacious violation of those prohibitions. The form of following dogma or of schism. The form of following the cycle or of discontinuing the cycle. In a system with two courses of action, schism is inevitable. And only one of these paths will be true, as truth is discreetly separate from untruth. <laughs> oh, they've done him well. They've done him well. It's a very dogmatic approach to the thing, which is all full on for the Adeptus Mechanicus, but it's very much a thing of, it, there can't be two possible right answers. There has to be one. Anyway, uh, did I not believe the Elders to be an error? Amanaz did not reject any one specific prohibition, but found their cumulative effect to be oppressive. The system of rigid limitations had confined seekers of knowledge to a circular track, spelling doom for the thinking mind. And that cycle of repetition had to be broken. That was why he was dubbed the Messiah of discontinuing. Fair enough. Um, okay, so our next options seem to push down different paths, and given what happened with Heinrich, I do want to read through them all carefully, not just pick one at random. Uh, only a fool would find no flaw in the creed. That's about seeking perfection. That's about the fully dogmatic approach. That's about independence. That's a thing. But I don't know whether it would actually be right for Pascal, because the whole you're basically going the opposite of what the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus believe. That is basically heretical, and that is not likely to go anywhere, because that presumably just cuts off a conversation and he does what he wants. Um... Hmm, okay. So let's go with the independence approach. The one I most likely would stick with, so I don't know if it's right for him, but it's probably the best for this playthrough, I guess. Uh, I prefer to believe in myself and my own abilities to decide independently what is right. Comprehension is the true path to knowledge, and comprehension can only be attained individually, not taken for granted. Your path commands respect. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Pascal's voice takes on a thoughtful tone, and it's, uh, it's outwardly, uh, otherworldly might peters out. Okay, so that had some effect on me. Well, I guess we'll find out later. I will continue my research into the Blessed Martyr's memory with all due reverence. So that is on about the guy who we fought, well, basically tried to arrest Pascal when we went to Dragonus. Now we need to ask about Desmets, who was the guy we met on Kiva Gamma. So, have you studied uh, Desmets Neural Augment yet? I have destroyed it. Mm, okay. Uh, a slight telltale rattle in Pascal's face make him sound unconvincing. Um, you're lying. Uh, this statement is true. I am yet to settle into a definitive course of action. I am running a spot diagnostic on the memory of the heretic Demens. Even though purity protocols stipulate that his blasphemous knowledge must be eradicated, I am not drawn toward forbidden information, but only to data concerning the blessed Amanas. Have you found out anything? The success has been partial. Demens Hanaman's identity has been confirmed. 
the widespread influence of paranoid motivations is observable in his cognitive processes, which is what seems to have caused him to break his vows. However, extensive regions of his memory have been damaged by forbidden technologies and are, for now, defying decryption. My study of the minds of the tech comrades, Abel, Tarsus, and Demence, has revealed an anomalous similarity between the patterns of damage their memories sustained, what I attributed to cognitive idiosyncrasies, synaptic damage, and the distortive action of scrap code, may be the result of a different kind of influence. The undecryptable data fragments of their memory arrays are mysteriously symmetrical. Okay, that is just worrying. So... Everything that's been wrong with the adaptance mechanics of people we've run into so far are, like, all related to the same thing? Are we sure our map's not just, like, head heretic here? <laughs> Is that going to be the toast point for Pascal's whole thing? Uh, what corrupted demands? An echo of the warp. Energies of the immaterium that had seeped into real space and taken the shape of a Vox signal. I have found recorded cases of similarly induced corruption in the archive. Listening to the void is a perilous occupation. Yes. Um, that is uh, probably the main reason that things just go wrong in the Imperium all the time. But, uh, okay. Um, but what did you want to... Uh, but you did want to know what he knew. You were interested. The quest for knowledge is our mission of highest priority. But what did men's promise was not knowledge, but a distorted copy of it. This was not what the Deus Mechanicus had told us to seek. True, true, fair enough, okay. Uh, any information on Aramnat? Aram the data discovered is unreadable. It is encrypted, albeit only partially. And I hypothesize that the heretic demands was attempting to decrypt it. I will take every effort to extract a larger volume of data. Information pointing to the unit referred to as the Maimed Hunter is alleged to be of critical significance. Okay, so presumably that's the next target for Pascal's side quest. Probably going to be in the next act, judging by the fact that essentially the three parts of this act were all coming together as one, so it's either going to be the end of the act or into the next one. Uh, has it occurred to you that all these events may be part of Aranat's plan? That is a valid hypothesis, but not a very likely one. Its truth value is irrelevant, as it does not contradict the necessity of establishing the fate of Archmagus Aranat. That is very true. Uh... You fear knowledge even though you extol it? Whether knowledge can be profane is the grand question. Lay people find comfort in the delusion that knowledge is merely information. That, in and of itself, it is harmless. And only turns dangerous when it falls into the hands of the wicked. My apologies. 90% of my processing power is engaged in the analysis of my tech comrade's memory. My response time may be longer than usual. Okay, that is not what it says there, but, um... Yeah, okay, so he's just going on about, uh... Knowledge is not always a positive thing, but we still must seek it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this is the, I assume... Again, this is probably going on to influencing future behaviour, so I have to read these thoroughly. Uh, I almost decided to speak to you, so I wonder if that's... Uh, so that's the dogmatic approach, I'm going to ignore that one. Not all knowledge comes from the Omicide, some is rooted in evil. That's the... I, I want to say it's the more practical approach. That's the humanist, ignorant approach, that's almost heretical. That's the iconoclast one. Like yeah, this is purely dogmatic. This is realistic, but sees it as more of a you have to humanity must remain ignorant to be safe approach is almost this one. And then this one is stupid. 
So we're going to go with this one. So you seek knowledge because it's what you enjoy doing. So do what you uh, enjoy, otherwise what's the point in living? That too is true. I thirst for knowledge, and the Omnissiah has rewarded me with the gift of a mission to seek it. Perhaps it makes no difference to him whether good or ill comes of the knowledge I obtain. He merely wants me to obtain it. Hmm. That almost leads down a heretical line in all in itself, so uh, we'll see what the uh, um, outcome of this one is. Uh, tech priest lowers his head pensively, the mechadendrite slows down smoothly, and uh, the steely overtones disappear from Pascal's voice. Response affirmative. The decryption will continue with diligence and caution. Yeah, I don't really like any of the options be that came from that last one. And fruitful. So, we'll see what the outcome of that is. Do we have uh, anyone else hiding on the bridge? Because they will occasionally just hide little people like uh, Abel here. Do we get to talk to him? Or, yeah, he's just doing the same as usual. But I don't think... Because do we have the other servitor we picked up? Or has Heinrich got him? I don't see him anywhere. I'm going to have to double check, though, because they're going to hide him in a corner, presumably. I'm going to assume he's not here yet. He might turn up later. So, moving on. We'll do Heinrich. I think we'll do Heinrich last, because he's the most likely to have a long conversation. We'll check in with the sister and the navigator. Greetings. Uh, nothing new here, it seems. And then Cassia. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. Okay, so that's all of that done. We do need to return Dr uh, Dragonus at some point to have a meeting with uh, the Lady Navigator's mentor, I guess it's called. Uh, have the Ox Spirits brought you anything interesting, anything interesting lately? No, okay. So I assume that's just you get a certain amount every time you unlock a chapter or something and they're just your rumours to go around running with. So we'll probably get more of them later on. Right, finally, Heinrich. To what do I owe this visit? Uh, are you satisfied with the results uh, of your mission on Kiva Gamma? Of course. The fabricator sensor's machine was stopped. Not another soul will be sent into the mouth of the arch enemy. In time, we will succeed in uncovering and stopping other schemes of the cult. We dealt a blow not only to the cultists, but to the arch enemy itself. I cannot help but be pleased. Hmm. So. I guess it's running off our persuasion because we're on the bridge, so this is a good reason to have yourself as a main stat person, which is a interesting way of doing things, but it does kind of limit character build somewhat. I can't imagine, again, if I were to do this playthrough on a warrior assassin build, I'd have this sort of backup of who can do uh, different roles. So, Chetan Koji did something to you, I want to know what. I touched the corruption of the arch enemy. Did you honestly think the experience could somehow be a pleasant one? Psychers, even sanctioned ones, even those who have performed all the rituals, passed all the initiations, we are all gateways to forces hostile to humanity. I survived a difficult battle on Kiava Gamma, one that was invisible to others and potentially fatal for myself. Okay, interesting it says failure there, even though the role clearly passed. Not sure what's going on there. That's a new one on me. Might have, might be a bug sort of still in the system, but I feel like that's what would have happened enough. Uh, what are you going to do next? My visit to Kiava Gamma did not produce answers to all my questions, but we did succeed in dealing a blow to the cult by destroying the fabricator sensor's machine. I have directed my spies to track the sex surviving leaders. I am certain that they will have useful information for us soon. Though, small, this is a victory for the Golden Throne, and I have you to thank for it. Uh, okay, that's just trying to get rid of him. I think that'll be all for now. Thank you for finding the time for our conversation. He sounds so grumpy just about the fact we persuaded him to be more merciful. Uh, okay, so that's getting rid of Yolette, that's getting rid of Adira, that's the looting thing. So we've done there, we've done all of the housekeeping, I believe. So we can move on and try and get up north. Well, sector north? <laughs> up? 
never quite sure how you do directions in space. It's always been a bit of a could be anything. So where do we leave ourselves? I'm pretty sure we're in the bottom two planets where we have to now go back on our side. Yeah, because we are have to go back this way up here. And then uh, I guess all the way through to Dragonus. Which would be a little annoying, but yeah, they haven't really put a good connecting route here. Might do one of them myself. So that'll save a lot of time, but we do need to head back to... Which colony is it that needs our attention? Foulstone. Okay, if we're going to Foulstone anyway, I think we can swing back because it's there, isn't it? So yeah, we've got to go that way anyway. So off we go. Okay, nothing so far. We're now that was the only orange, so we're now on to the yellows. Uh, scheduled service in the ship chapel was interrupted in the most profane manner. The images of Saints and Martyrs depicted on the uh, altarpiece started to move a step to side, uh, step down from the canvas. The congregation was filled with terror and dozens of perish in a stampede. The illusion disappeared on its own, but it claimed several priests and altar attendants. It is said the frenzy treat can still be heard echoing in the vaults of the, uh, of the chapel during prayer. Uh, the ship left the material and returned to wheel space. Basically, minor warp uh, effect. It, it, it's, it's shenanigans. It, it, it's not really a full thing. Uh, here's another one. Ships and forces notified the off uh, notified office about strange insect-like creatures appearing on the Astropack chamber deck. The uh, entity was destroyed, but the incident was recalled a few days later when one of the Astropaths lost his mind, shrieking about a splitting headache. It's like a perish shortly after that, and the autopsy revealed countless... Uh, bloated larvae consuming his brain, the corpse, and the insects were safely disposed of. Lovely. Welcome to the 40k universe. It's terrible. Uh, we have been moving around a bit, so time to check on what everyone's built. Okay, so that is repeating what it's held. I assume it's that's the replenishment, actually, of the stuff we were using. So, Kiva Gamma... Did that construction, we didn't get anything like new story away, so I guess we can move on to the next one. Giants we acquired for one of the projects on someone else, and it gives us more extractum, so let's get that underway. Also gives us profit factor, we need that right now. I do need to check if we've got any more ways of getting profit factor in. Because that is important now that we're starting to get to levels where we can't afford things for the profit factor. Nothing there. This it's this or this. I can't remember which one said we said we were going to do. So I guess let's have a quick look. This does do Profit Factor and Cabalas mission. And it gives us Toxic Grenades. Which actually are really good. Because you can put them on the sister and sort of group them up. Because they'll move and... I, I don't know if they'll move. But it's when it says Provokes... Uh, characters to attack nearby, nearby enemies, they'll just start weakening each other at least. So what's this one? This is the Druskans. We don't need the Druskans anymore because we've already got the Heavy Flamer. But it is very good for that because that's amazing on um, Heinrich. whether we want to invest that into Heinrich or have this. So we just have all the grenades. We can just keep spending every combat. Plus it has profit factor on it. I assume we're a ways off though on getting to 29. Because we haven't spent that much into the Cabalists. I'll leave that one for now. We'll think about that as we go. Uh, I'm assuming all we've got is here. Which is just a bonus. So actually I was going to save this. Because I wasn't sure how many slots we were building. But we can just build it. Because we need that profit factor anyway. So we let get that done and then carry on our ways. So that puts our profit factor above 50. So we can buy more stuff if we want to, but I'll save it probably between episodes because it's not going to be particularly interesting. Maybe if we're on the bridge again for another thing, I'll do it then. But keep going. Uh, the set steady rhythm of life aboard the vessel was disrupted when on the fourth watch of the voyage, lower decks had their gravity reversed. The stunned dozens of the affected settings were woken up uh, by being torn from their assigned beds and tossed onto the ceiling. 
Numerous injuries and fatalities were reported. The difficulties in performing regular duties due to the gravity reversal continued until the end of the journey. After the ship exited the warp, gravity returned to norm at an event that once again was accompanied by deaths and injuries among the crew. Yeah, having gravity reversed on you suddenly would really, really do a lot. So, heading on back down to Palestone. Tech Priest reported a brief malfunction in the gale field generation that left the vessel exposed to the warp for a brief second. According to the reports, something did manage to get into the ship and is now prowling the uh, corridors of Loading Bay 5. Um, send patrols into the affected chamber. Do need to root out what's ever there, but we don't know what it is. Sending in more people might not be bad. Ignoring it's definitely bad, so it's this or this. It's probably sending the patrols. Several armed teams left uh, to search for the unknown creature that invaded the vessel, but all, all but two returned with nothing to show for it, but hair turned... Uh, Hair turned prematurely grey in horror stories of what's happening on Loading Wave 5. One team brought back a bizarre trophy they were alleged uh, found behind a shattered bulkhead. Last team was never seen or heard from again. Lovely. Uh, so now we head over to our actual destination. The officers on one of the lower decks stopped providing st uh, status reports. Three days have passed uh, since the Brock system broadcast anything other than subdued moans and wet slapping noise. An enforcer squad sent to investigate report that dozens of lower levels had regressed into animals and succumbed to depravity. Connection uh, with the squad was shortly lost. The high missionary of the Adeptus uh, Ministorum became flush and fury condemned these designs of the arch enemy. The hotbed of heresy was cleansed with fire and prayer. By the grace of the uh, by the God Emperor's grace, no perils of the warp uh, prevented the vessel from returning to real space. Okay, so now we're here, so we can get on with this colony dealing with itself. So, warning: personal uh, wait, what? Personal presence on the colonized world is required. Travel to the are we not on Falstone? or do we have to land? Oh, we actually have to go to orbit, don't we? Yep. Second time it's happened, I'm still trying to remember how it's done. So we have to head to the planet. And then I believe we can click it from here. Repair the ship while we're at it. Yeah, now we click it. A troop of well-armed people has landed on the colony and started plundering, uh, plundering acting like they're in charge. The report suggests uh, these parrot... These, are pi these pirating cutthroats are privateers, the likes of whom flock towards the banner of the Winter Scale, seeking his favour. So we need to enter the battle or buy the loyalty, which costs the profit factor. I don't want to lose profit factor right now. So, enter the battle. I wonder why uh, Rush the Colony was blurred out. Maybe I should have checked, but I don't know how much that would have mattered. We do get to test the Heavy Flamer now, though. So that's a thing. All stations, report no, no, never mind. It's, it's ship. I was hoping for a bland battle. Can you blame me? Oh, I didn't change over my sh uh, stuff either. Do need to re-gear the ship at some point. I wonder, can we do that now? No, it's all locked. Okay. So what do we got? Two frigates and a cruiser. Cruiser's going to be a pain. The frigate should melt because they're facing the wrong way. So I guess since we don't have like, a close range to work with, we can just rush at them. Get the torpedoes out. They're going to presumably swing around this way. So maybe I should have fired the torpedoes that way, but I don't think it matters. Might as well load up all the damage frontly. Wasn't that supposed to avoid? This weak point is never located on the opposite side of the ship. Well, that's clearly not working properly. What a surprise. But... Doesn't particularly change anything. Need to fire into it. Do not hesitate. Show no mercy. At least chunked through their shields initially. Uh, yeah, I think I'll have to do for now. Our other frigate should be able to back us up, or at least go straight through the shields that we've now opened up. And they are trying to leave. I assume they get have they have to wait a turn. Not just leave immediately.
Dictator class cruiser, because I think that's our first big cruiser. So that's going to hurt when it opens up on us. You can see the size of the damn thing. Oh, it's carrier as well. So this is similar to the chaos ship we fought. Uh, I think we can get to here and hit both of these. Because the torpedoes should do AoE. But I don't know if it'll kill the enemy torpedoes. It does not. Okay. We can spin that while it's in the air. And that opens up its weak side for us again. Do need to focus down the little ones, but those things are going to shred me to pieces. Uh, pop that on that. Okay, that's on the front. That's good. If we shift forward, I think we're going to do a tight turn to try and get away from this thing a little bit. But if I shift forward a little... Which side's got the long guns? That one does. So if we go one more forward... Fire into that. Lance. Oh, Lance is just off from doing that. We'll have to use it on the other one, but that one should go into that. Another enemy sundered by the void. It's one ship down. That we can try and get our frigate to take the majority of the damage and then work towards this. So that we can swing around on them on, but now we need to turn. The problem is, if we do a tight turn to avoid the torpedoes, we probably don't get... I think we need to end up about here. Somewhere. So, we're fine going this way. Which will let us fire our main lance into that. Well, top lance. This is our main lance. Um, and then we can fire that on its side into their side. But I want to do it from the front. Oh, it's gonna hit. Why is that hitting the side? That side thing. I thought it would hit the front. Um, by that that way, we'll try swing them round, and then we can get like behind them here. These torpedoes might detonate our torpedoes, which is fine. I'll be honest at this point. Uh, kick those shields over. Yeah, that's so basically. If there's any space on the other side, it shifts out. Okay, now I'm starting to understand how that ability works. They're aiming at the fighters, that's fine. As long as they actually do something about them, because otherwise it's going to be painful. Now the thing is, if they detonate their torpedoes, don't they blow themselves up? Okay, they didn't reach the frigate, that's fine. It's going to be painful to get onto this. Because I don't know how big its guns are. No, that's Arnold Shield. Uh, Void Shield has been vilified. Yeah, that's what I'd expect of a cruiser. That's just going to rip through shields like no to business. And we're going to have multiple fight squadrons that don't disappear on their own. We're helpless under their fire. Do something. Thankfully, their fighters don't appear to hurt quite as much as the um, Chaos ones did. But this is going to be an annoying fight considering how much they outgun us. Okay, torpedo control to get them after that. I need to scrap this ship. Can't quite do that yet. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I need to start scrapping fighters. And then swing that way can do a full turn. Do we want to shift sideways? Well, we can only use one of these. But I think I do want to do the full turn. And I want to come around this way. Which does mean I don't get to use our main guns, which is annoying. But if I go that way, I'm... how far can these move? Doesn't tell me. They should be able to move to about here, though, so... To get those guns on that, I need to do... I think I need to do this. Damn, I couldn't quite get the angle. I was hoping to turn a bit more than that. Um, <laughs> can get that on them. That should be onto the weak inside. 
it's annoying that's alive. Uh, swing all the way around. Risky, but I have to swing all the way around. Get the. Uh, I don't want to reinforce yet because I might need it for next turn. Guess we're firing into the big ship. Well, though, to be honest, I'm not expecting we're going to be able to do much to it. And then five torpedoes left. This should bug out, like, leave. But. Yeah, those. Oh, they're heading the other way. I could have gone full round and not risked it as much. Okay, so they disappear in two turns. That's fine. And that blocks itself and will take damage when that explodes. Okay, that's probably the best setup we could have got. Because the plant the torpedo there and detonate it, that should take out a lot. Or at least damage shields, if nothing else. Yeah, it hits shields. That's fine. Because uh, then we can do the same with them. <laughs> the fact they crashed into each other is probably the best we were ever going to get. And we're starting to get through the shields on this side. That's good. Uh, I don't want to get into a lance battle with this thing. I'd rather have a torpedo wall with it, because it doesn't appear to have torpedoes. It's a big advantage of our ship compared to theirs. Um, pop that on it. Good. Don't want to turn it. wonder if I can turn you guys. Can I scrap you? No. Okay, that doesn't do damage. It's worth testing, though. Probably do a full turn to get behind it, because again, if it doesn't have torpedoes and it only has like app stuff, if you sit on its tail, we should just be able to kill it. So we need. I think we're gonna be because they're heading that way. We should be fine. Do these ever have to return? So that is gonna disappear. You see that symbol on top of it. So we... these things presumably return and then come back out if they survive. So I'm going to scrap this one. But first, let's fire lances into the big guy. Yeah, we're starting to get through it now. You can see the damage starting to come in. Torpedoes. I want to be a little closer. But I do want to start turning as well. Should have the angle to be able to do it from there. Yeah. If we can like keep hitting its side, we'll be fine. Fire the torpedoes that way. Swing round to be behind it. That angle should be good for the moment. Then we can sit behind it. These will have to go back to the uh, carrier. And that should get right on its rear. I am desperately trying not to... Um... recharge shield because I need the damage to come in before more fighters come flying around. Oh, they don't even go straight back. They have to fly in. Well, that makes them even work. Like, I was thinking aircraft was strong in this, but if they have to, like, travel all the way back and not shoot, that makes them so much worse. Okay, so... Annoyingly, we do need to change our heading a bit. Do we have the angle to get rid of those annoying gnats? Not where we are. Although if we shift up using this, that should let us at least pick some of them off. Okay, they're gone. So, presumably, it's out of tricks. Its main guns are ridiculously deadly to us, but it doesn't have our turning circle. Knowing we are going to have to settle for picking off it's rear, but I don't want to go that far out because it will turn and get the angle on us. Our main advantage is our turning circle. So I guess we sit there and hope that's good enough. And then just fire into it. There is a big risk that it just turns a corner, but I don't think it has a very good turning arc. I'm going to reinforce the front shields just in case, but... Oh, do we have to end up over there? In which case we end up over here. Like, right on its tail. 
Probably could have fired that on the way around, but I'll be honest, it doesn't matter at that point. This is actually kind of cool, because it's more like uh, actual space combat. Okay, they do have a backwards firing arc. That's going to hurt. Their turning circle is really bad compared to ours. Ow! Never mind. Because that might just straight up kill us. Let us not lose our zeal. Oof. Okay, get that all the way through onto it. So their turning circle is that, which means we're kind of in a lot of trouble now, I guess. So... Hmm. I did think we were doing well in this fight, but I guess not now. Um, I could... I'm just having a think here. I could try all in it, but it'd be very hard to pull it off. Definitely need to get the shields restarted then in that case. So first things first, torpedo control. Get that onto its rear shields. And then... Oh, is it trying to bug out? Um, okay. This is one of the harder fights, and I feel like we could lose this, obviously, at any point now. So... Let's... Get out of its range. We can leave those fighters for dead, because they ain't going anywhere particularly important. Restart shields just so we have a chance of living. Fire torpedoes that way. I think we'll be good for there. Even if they just leave, that's fine. Yeah, those fighters are going to have a hard time keeping up with us. So we now need to close the gap. That's the shields up, but that does slow us down. And then, if we hit either side, we'll be fine, but I want to get these... I wonder if we can have multiple uh, weak sections. I do want to hit that flank. But I don't know if I can catch up to it at this point. I guess this might help. It'll at least do a lot of damage and make it come towards us. We should be miles out of its range at the moment, so that's fine. I'm going to reinforce the front anyway, but... Yeah, it's just trying to run. And they should not be able to keep us up, keep up with us. Get the torpedoes rushing towards it. We're going to have one turn of fight, I think. Might have to be the torpedoes that kill it. I think we can definitely get hits on it. It's so whether we can get hits on the right bit without getting hit ourselves. A little ways out from being in a good spot. At least harass it. The dark and that apparently kills it. I thought that was on a shielded section, but I guess not. And then this is the only thing we have to worry about. We can strafe this way to minimize the amount they can hit us. Oh, never mind. We can turn a little as well. Strange our back sh our shields haven't regenerated yet. I thought we had that going. Maybe it got cancelled. Like, presumably they have to detonate, yeah, because they run out of stuff. A worthy contribution to Lady Ooh, that was close. Legacy. But that's how fights, I feel, are going to scale quite badly, so... That's why they're giving you all these upgrades. I wish there was a way of getting bigger ships. Because it does seem that our ship will get outclassed relatively quickly. Uh, did we even put the new Lance in? No, we didn't. Yeah, so that goes on there. I like the torpedoes, but we need to... Actually, do, we should have the profit factor now to go buy the better ones. So we might just do that. Because we're getting towards the hour mark, so. 
It's probably going to be the end of this episode when I do that. So, ultimates. So, what else do we want? So... That helps fire multiple torpedoes. That is crippling the ship. That's ramming. Don't need to do that. That's all about position. That's not particular. That is good. But be forcing yourself into certain positions is going to cause a massive issue. Um... That's all about that. That's cool. Okay. Uh, I think we'll go with... I do like the idea of loading masses of torpedoes and just going for that, though. So we'll go with that one for now. And then this one can be... I mean, that one's good. The problem with this one... Is that it's going to struggle. You know, you're never going to use the ram aspect. But the maneuverability aspect might be a thing. So I guess we'll pick that one. And then I assume we can't upgrade it. But having like this level of torpedo is going to be cool. Oh, I deselected everyone. Because I clicked all the things. So put them all back. It should be fine. Uh, da -da -do. Where's the Gentagon? You're there. Ironically, Heinrich is higher, but it doesn't matter because uh, Abelard gets the upgraded ability. You're in the right place, and then you go there. Okay, so we're back to where we were. Cool, cool. And then, having done all that, we can... Do we get anything from the colony now, or is that just all of it? I think that's all of it. We haven't actually built a rank 3 in Battlestone, so I guess that's something we need to think about. So that's all about security. That's about the Druskins and that. What was this one again? That's got the profit factor and the whole lot of little stuff. This is... I'm not particularly keen on this one. How much profit factor does... So that affects the profit factor. I wish there was a way of seeing where the profit factor came from. Because it doesn't like label it as uh, Foulstone gives X, for example. We can probably figure it out, though. So... That gives two. That gives five. Six. So we're on six. So that's going to give us a little bit. Nine. Eighty percent. Approximately fifteen or so. Sixteen, I think. Whereas this is going to give a bit, but then it'll give a whole lot of efficiency. So, I think I'm okay with this one, just a massively increased profit factor. This does not give anything particularly amazing. So, I guess do that. It does cost a bit for me, and that's fine. Actually, it creates a lot of stuff. It doesn't take it away, though, by the looks of it, because none of that went down. So, last thing we'll do is, just before the end of the episode, repair the ship, obviously. A lot of that repaired itself, it seemed. But, let's go quickly grab all the stuff that was 50 profit factor that we couldn't afford previously. And then that'll be it for this episode. Where is my tradesman? Quartermaster, whatever. High Factorum, but I just call him Trademaster because that's what he is. Okay, so. Was it in here? Yeah, so that's the Melter Torpedoes. Wish there was an equip button from this panel. That would be really cool. Do need more profit factor because then we could get even more upgrades. Uh, so, done with you. Grab that. Not that that was particularly relevant. What does that staff even do? Gains uh, Infernal Ability. 
Ooh, okay. So if you had a pyromancer, this is your staff. That's actually... What does Inferno do? So it's little... It, it's basically a flamer. It's a flamer staff. Doesn't say what its power level is anywhere. But I imagine if you can get a sister working with this, you're going to do a lot. Oh, its power's there. Power 7. Interesting. So there's definitely a pyromancer build there. I like that option. Uh, anything from you, Commissar Boots... Okay, so that helps increase maneuverability. Not overly important, but at least decent. And then what's this one? Warp damage, heretical. Madeira gloves are best, okay. You get the power axe, finally. That's not going to be particularly useful for anyone we have in combat, I believe, at the moment. Although we could give Abelard the ability to use power weapons, and then that's nothing new from here. Okay, so with that all said and done, I think we'll leave it here for this episode, and I will see you guys in the next one.